Welcome to the Heartbeat for Hire podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay Dowd. My goal is to help train leaders and sales organizations how to manage and deliver results with empathy, compassion, and kindness. Let's get started. Greetings and welcome to this episode of Heartbeat for Hire. I'm really happy to bring you our guest today. Marcus Ogden was drafted into the NFL as an offensive lineman. He played for five years with the Titans, Bills, Ravens, and Jaguars. After five years of playing in the league, he decided to retire and pursue a career in construction and contracting. After losing it all in that venture, he had to reinvent himself through grit, determination, and hard work. Today, Marcus is an inspirational keynote speaker, executive coach, best-selling author, podcast host, and marketing leader to help build the success of others. Welcome to the show, Marcus. So happy you're here. Thanks, Lizzie. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me on. Great. How about, would you, for the folks that don't know you, just give a little background of your story. Yeah, my name is Marcus Ogg. I'm from Washington, D.C. I now live in Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. I'm an inspirational keynote speaker. I'm a business coach, a consultant. I'm a brand ambassador. I own parts of different businesses that align with our values and what we believe in. And I'm also a podcast host of the Get Authentic with Marcus Ogden show. We're ranking the top 1% most popular worldwide. And we got that at seven and a half months. I mean, that's incredible. Why don't we start there? So... A lot of us podcast as you were here on one now. So what what was important to you in building your podcast? What was important to me, Lindsay, was making sure that we had the authentic message of really inspiring people who were going to share their authentic stories. Like we don't have a rhyme or reason of like, you know, we've, we've done athletes, entrepreneurs, business sure. leaders men and women, executive, um, you know, all races, all ages, all backgrounds, different, you know, people all across the globe. But as long as you have an authentic story and are going to be vulnerable and share to help inspire our listeners and our audience, then that's all we care about. And as a result of that, we feel it's helped us greatly to go from starting out. We start our first one was on our first episode was June 22nd of last year to now where we're now July of 2023, you know, almost 13 months later, we have a lot of successful, you know, episodes, a lot of people who come on that love our show. We've been downloaded in 103 countries, over 65,000 downloads. And like I tell everybody, it's just, you gotta keep being consistent. You gotta keep going because there's so many podcasts out there. I think it's like what, four plus million in the world right now. Right. So if you're not being aggressive with content and consistent and as a matter of fact Lindsay, we just actually created our own app so we have the marcus ogden app and it's on apple it's on um android phones you go to the app store type in marcus ogden m-a-r-q-e-s o-g-d-e-n and it pops right up and it's really about really great content that we don't share on some platforms mm -hmm. to help listeners that want to follow us and be inspired, continue to grow in their path with exclusive content on our new app. Cool. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. Um, so let's go back a little bit in your story. So you had your run in the NFL and you know, on this show, we talk about stories of resilience and, you know, when you're playing football, you got to be really resilient. We know that. And you bounced around to a bunch of different teams. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? And then I want to go into your construction bit. Yeah. So the NFL was really interesting because it taught me a lot about grit, perseverance, determination, teamwork, adjusting, you know, being around, you know, different players, different coaches, different philosophies, different styles. Some coaches love to do air assaults, pass all day. Some people love the ground and pound, running the football all day. Some people like, you know, um, fans had a lot of great fan support. Sometimes some towns didn't have as much great fan support. And sometimes we play different types of teams in different divisions. Sometimes we play great opponents, sometimes not as much. So the NFL taught me a lot about just teamwork, life, balance, you know, how to move forward in your journey how to really be resilient, how to push through. Because like, like you said, it's not easy. And mm -hmm. football is not designed to play for long. So I tell everybody, every athlete, say, oh, I want to be an NFL player. Well, that's great. But when you – What's next? You get, right? What's next? What's yeah. the next thing? Right. What's the next plan? So 
I let people, I, I try to people understand that football is just a stepping stone to the next phase of your life. And you have to look at it as that, because again, you would take Tom Brady, you know, play 20 plus years. I mean, that's, right. that's, that's an anomaly. That's, that's very rare. Almost that'll probably never happen again, right. Mm -hmm. To that level. But now Tom is retired. Now he owns part of the Raiders. He's trying sure. to do his things. He's a business guy. So He's doing it correctly. So I tell young athletes, have a plan so that when you're done playing your sport, you can elevate and you can rise to the yeah. next level. I love that. And I think, you know, nowadays it's the world of the side hustle, right? So we've got, everybody's got lots of sources of income or they should be thinking about it, whether you're, you know, 20 or you're 50, you know, there's lots and lots of ways to, you know, fortify your bank account. And, uh, you know, I have a daughter who's looking at doing a theater career and that is similar to an athletic career. You know, you have a, a point in time where you're going to be at the top of your game and you've got to be thinking about what else are you going to do to support that. So I, I love that you, you said that. So you transitioned from football into construction. Talk a little bit about that journey. Yeah, so from the NFL, I went from the National Football League. I struggled for about six months with alcohol, painkiller addiction, nightlife gambling, because I really didn't have a plan. Like, unfortunately, I did not have that next stepping stone from the National Football League to what was next. So I struggled for a little bit. Finally, I found Caden Premier Enterprises, we start off as a small concrete contractor. We then grew into site work, development, site development, uh, grading, stonework. And then we became the largest African-American in the subcontracting space of site work, earthwork development. And we became an eight-figure construction company. We were doing between 15 to $20 million a year at our height, worked for some huge contractors, generals like Whiting Turner, Turner, uh, Barton Mallow. We work with developers and owners like Johns Hopkins Hospital, uh, Towson University. But unfortunately, Lindsay, as my ego, excuse me, as the company grew, my ego grew right along with it. Mm -hmm. I became very self-centered. I became very just arrogant. I became very just focused just on money, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme. And as a result of that mentality, as a result of that disposition, I put myself in harm's way and harm actually came my way when most of my employees said, okay, this guy's an a-hole, I'm out of here. Yeah. And then I, I got into a bad job with a contractor. And as a result of that, I ended up going out of business mm -hmm. and I lost everything in 2013. And I moved to Raleigh, April, 2013 with $400 to my name. And I didn't know a soul except for my ex-wife and her family. And I was just literally trying to start over from rock bottom. God, that's that. I mean, that's, that's so crushing to go through that journey. And I like how you talk about it now because you have this awareness and you've made an evolution of the kind of leader you want to be. So um, talk a little bit about what that taught you and how you pivoted to where you are now. So what it taught me is that in life, you have to learn that when you're successful or you're achieving something, you can't forget how you got there. You can't forget your people. You can't forget what got you from A to Z. And as a result of forgetting that, it cost me everything. And then I moved here and I didn't really take any accountability or any responsibility for my life, for my actions, for my failures, for my for my faults. And as a result of that, I was just still stuck in this kind of like this hamster in a wheel, like this pattern where I was, wasn't going anywhere. Things weren't moving. Things weren't, you know, weren't progressing. And it wasn't until Lindsay, I hit my rock bottom moment. One of my favorite quotes by JK Rollins is rock bottom is the moment that I rebuilt my life. Mm -hmm. And until I hit that rock bottom moment, it was still hamster wheel, everybody's fault but mine. Poor Marcus, poor me, help me. Marcus is a victim. Mm -hmm. As a result of that mentality, I was going absolutely nowhere fast. So it took me hitting the absolute bottom floor 
to get where I'm at and say, you know what, something's got to change. And that something is me. And what inspired the change? Because I get the tr- the journey to the bottom, but what prompted you? What happened in your mind or who inspired you to say, this is the wrong way to be thinking about my life and I've got to, I've got to pivot? Well, it was not a person or it was an action where my spoiled milk moment where somebody's trash, rotten meat, nasty, protruding, horrible smelling garbage got all over my body, my skin, and my clothes. And that was my wake-up call. That was that time where I said, okay, it's time to make a change. It's time to say enough's enough. And that was the moment. That was where I said, if I don't make a change now, I'll be here for the rest of my life. And what I did is kind of at that moment, my pain became my passion or AK my purpose. And I said, what can I do to help others? And I said, well, I can start speaking. I've heard this guy, Tony Robbins, on some of the things I've been listening to as I'm working as a janitor. Maybe this is a good way to go. So I started speaking. But as you know, Lindsay, when you start something, it doesn't go very well. You're not going to make a lot of money. You got to start out. You got to crawl before you walk. So I started out at the bottom. And for two and a half years, no paid jobs, all just free if any. And I just tried, I just kept working and working and working. And we got our first paid job, April, 2016. As a result of that, I started getting to some opportunities and then I got coached and developed Mm -hmm. in April, I'm sorry, in February of 2018, met Mel Robbins, you know, my business partner, Don Wiener, got us in touch with Mel Robbins. I went to a program at Penn State through the National Football League Player Care Foundation. Mm -hmm. And that really turned it around for us. It really got us to say, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we can do. And then as a result of that, now here we are in 2023, very fortunate to have a lot of great clients, speaking, coaching, consulting, Mm -hmm. uh, brand ambassador, our podcast. But again, We started out just like anybody else that starts out in business. We started at the bottom. Yeah. And so now you've got your your, a whole bunch of different ventures you're involved in. Talk a little bit about your leadership philosophy and how do you keep your people happy and motivated and inspired? So to me, servant leadership is serving a cause that is greater than yourself We actually have a job coming up. We're going to be talking here in a moment with my business partner for the state of South Dakota, where we're talking about self-absorption causes self-destruction, the importance of servant leadership. And to me, it's all about serving your people. And again, being empathetic, compassionate, and vulnerable, and being someone that connects with them. Because everybody has good days, bad days, and learning how to Work with your team on their bad days where things aren't going well or they're having struggles to really make that connection and help them to know that you hear them. You're not trying to just be a cattle driver or a cattle prodder. You're Mm -hmm. trying to actually be um, an empathetic, caring individual. And when you have that mentality, right, Lindsay, that's when I feel people say, yes, you actually want to help me. Yes. You actually want to connect with me. Yes. You actually want to make me feel more than just a number. And I mean, my partner, Dawn, she worked me for two years, didn't get paid Mm -hmm. because she believed me. Now she works, you know, works with me and I love to get paying her. She does great at what she does. We have all types of people like that. My website guy, George saw who just created our app for us. Uh, our trademark and patent person, Al Bruce, been with me for years. You know, these people worked with me when I had nothing. So that's what you got to find people that are actually committed to the alignment around a unified vision. That's what happens because when people are committed to that unified vision and alignment, then that's when great things happen going forward. I I love that. And I think, you know, it's certainly been my experience um, being a leader that when you give people the space to do their jobs and you tell them that you've got their back they can do amazing things. And when you can instill that confidence in them, they shine and the rewards come back tenfold when you give people that gratitude and that grace. And I just 
love that you recognize that and that you surrounded yourself with people that support you in that way. So you talk about something called the success cycle. What is that? The success cycle is our second book and it talks about three things, ambition, drive, and hard work. Ambition is creating your roadmap, your blueprint, trying to figure out what you want to do. So for my example, it'd be speaking, coaching, (laughs) consulting, like that was the ambition. That was the roadmap that we had when starting on this journey, like to have that disposition. So that's the ambition or ambitious part. The drive is being inspired over motivated. So to me, inspiration is breathing life into others and or doing something that you know it's for the long haul. Mm -hmm. It's not for motivating or short-term factors. It's not that. It's something where you know that what you're doing is all about, hey, I'm doing this for the long haul, which means you're not going to burn out. Do I get stressed in work? Yeah, of course, because a lot of things happening. Like I said, I've gone through a divorce and now I only have my daughter half the time. So trying to adjust to that, the new schedules, right? All that stuff is hard and it's stressful, but I've never and I never will burn out, which means I get tired of what I do. Never. Because I love our clients, I love my team, I love what we're doing. And as a result of that, I'm all about, hey, how can we actually move forward together? And then hard work, focus on yourself, not the competition. Yes, know what the competition is doing, absolutely. But don't get into this frame of mind like, oh my God, like uh, they're doing this, uh, they're doing that. You know, that'd be like me saying, oh, the speaker won that job and okay, I need to go get this job and they won that job, I got to stay on this job. Like, well, no, you can't do that because what will happen is you'll drive yourself insane, right? And a lot of people, unfortunately, get caught what I call the social media you know, image or game, like, oh, they 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 have this and they've got that and they're here and they're there. Well, you know, you don't really know what their life is like, right? You have no idea. So don't try to compare yourself to somebody that you don't really know who they are. They have no idea who you are. And if you're trying to keep up with them, and I tell that to NFL rookies, you know, don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't be a first, uh, don't be a uh, uh, an undrafted free agent trying to keep up with a first round draft pick. Don't be a first round draft pick keep with a 10 year NFL vet. Yeah. Like that's not, that's not good. Like be who you are, know who you are, move forward and don't try to be somebody that you're not just keep going forward with the right frame of mind, with the right intention. So the success cycle is all about ambition, drive and hard work, and then hit the button for it. Repeat. You, you said two things that I really love. And one I think is everybody's starting line is different right? Everybody's yardsticks are different. And to consistently compare yourself to others is unrealistic and you're only going to drive yourself crazy. Um, And then the other one is stress. And, you know, I talk so much about heart-centered leadership and what, what a great culture feels like and looks like. And I think, you know, when people hear the word culture, they think it's soft and fluffy and, and it's a nice to have. And the reality is it's, it's the center of your business. And if you don't have that, um, good luck. <laughs> People won't stay. You're you're not going to build that uh, retention that you want. You certainly won't have the loyalty and the trust that you need. Um, but I think the stress thing is not something I talk about a lot. And the reality is there's stress in any job that you have, even the ones you love. And how you handle that stress is critical. If you're going to be a leader that yells at people, you're going to fracture that trust. If you're going to embarrass people, you'll never have loyalty. So you have to figure out how you manage it. And and I just, I love the way you put that. That was really, really cool. Thank you. Um, So what is a chief networking officer? So a chief networking officer is an individual whose job is to network with people, go and meet people, and get them to understand what your brand is about, right? So it's all about meeting people, face-to-face interaction, 
uh, meeting through social media, meeting through virtual meetup groups, traveling. I'm actually going to a, an event, a networking event, actually, for our company in Tulsa next uh, next weekend, uh, next Friday through Sunday. It's a fitness mastermind where there's a guy, uh, Cole Taylor, who's putting it on. Uh, he was on my podcast, met him actually at a mastermind that, that we both spoke at. And one of my clients is going there. And so I'm like, wow, it could be great to meet people, networking, opportunity to get some business uh, and meet some great, some awesome people. So I'm heading to Tulsa uh, on Friday. So network, a chief networking officer is somebody that really goes in and networks because a marketing officer is somebody that I feel you're like putting out content on social, you know, media outlets, you know, podcasts, television, but you're not really meeting people or interacting with them to a degree. You're actually putting out content people to actually consume and know about you. But network is actually meeting people, shaking hands, you know, doing it virtually in person so they can actually get to know you, meet you and feel you and what you are about and what your organization is about as well. And you're the chief networking officer of your company. Am I right? I'm actually, well, huh, I'm the chief networking officer, CEO, and then all that. And <laughs> then I'm actually the chief networking officer for another company uh, called Staffist Strategies. And then mm-hmm. I'm the chief marketing officer for a company called Grind, which I'm a part owner of. Because with Grind, I put out content. I don't actually meet many people. But with Staffist, it's more the going to the events, things of that nature, and meeting them and going in that regard. I love it. So Marcus, what inspires you? What inspires me is helping people succeed where I failed in my journey so they don't make the same catastrophic mistakes that I made. Again, you heard me say that word, catastrophic. Are we going to make mistakes? Yep. All day, every day. But I try to tell our clients, I'm here to help you minimize your mistakes so you don't end up like I did, bankrupt, broke, home foreclosed on, cars repossessed, all my money gone, down to $400 in my bank account and having to start all over from the ground up. Mm, Love that. Um, Okay, and what would you like your legacy to be? I would love our legacy to be somebody that gave more than he received. I tell you all the time, when you do well in business by giving, you receive a lot. But the more you give, the more you get. But if you don't just give to get and you just keep giving and giving and giving, I think that's when things come out at you, you know, magnified tenfold. Like we closed on a brand new home. Well, me, me and my and my daughter and my my partners and my family, my friends, um, you know, two months ago. Without what we've done for our clients, this home that I'm actually uh, talking to you from, yeah, it wouldn't be. Wouldn't be. And I've gone through a lot of hardship the last few months, work-wise. You know, I was in an apartment where I was not really feeling my best, and I wasn't putting out great. Yeah, I was doing okay, but not constantly like I am now. Mm-hmm. I have an office at my home. You know, I have I have my stuff up. It's ours. Yeah, I can hang things on the wall. I, I ordered a couch finally, and it'll be get put together. I order from Wayfair, they put together here <laughs> tomorrow. I mean, on Friday, and you know, but in my apartment, right, Lindsay, I couldn't do that. Yeah, like I couldn't. It was it was fully furnished. It was small. It was dingy. It was dark, and I just didn't feel like I could, I had a place of my own. So now, like when my partner comes over to work, and and my daughter comes over, and she had her first sleepover not that long ago at oh. my new home, and so like. To me, that's the legacy of this giving, giving, giving. And as a result, yeah. this giving, 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 it allows us to have what we have. So I want our legacy to be just the one of this, a huge giver that never stopped giving no matter what. Thank you for sharing that. And I think, you know, the best leaders are the ones who are willing to be vulnerable and share that their journey is not all sunshine and daisies and it's, you don't always feel your best and we have our peaks and valleys and it's not the significance of the struggle. It's the rise up out of it. And you have this beautiful vantage point of being in a space that makes you feel your best and you know where you came from. So you can appreciate that. And I think that's so valuable for people to hear and understand. And I think it would be so easy to put you on a pedestal and say, 
oh, he's this former NFL legend and he's was on all these teams and he's a speaker and not see the struggle. And I think the fact that you share that makes you such an interesting guy. So thank you for doing that. I really sincerely appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on to talk about it. I really appreciate sharing, you know, what we're about, what we have going on. So how do people find you? Thank you, Lindsay. They can go to our website, www.marcus, M-A-R-Q-U-E-S, Ogden, O-G-D-E-N.com. You can go to also, our, we have a, a site for Marcus, M-A-R-Q-U-E-S, dot 360, excuse me, Marcus 360.com, excuse me. And then also they can go to our web, so I'm sorry, to our new app, which is Marcus Ogden. We're on Apple, we're on Android. Go to your Apple store, click it and type in our name and poof, the app will pop right up. And we're going to stop, we're going to start dropping new exclusive video content there within the next week or two at the, at the latest. I love it. That's so great. Well, congratulations on the new home and all your success. It is so much fun to watch. And thank you for putting out the good. Thank you for being a great servant leader. We need more examples like this. And this is what my mission is, is to transform leadership as we know it. That's why I do this show. That's why I want people to understand how you go from a rotten leader to a fabulous leader. And it's never too late to go on that journey. So thank you so much for sharing it. And thanks for being on the show, Marcus. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Lindsay. Thanks for everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Heartbeat for Hire. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to Heartbeat for Hire. If you like what you hear, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and leave a five-star review. To keep the conversation going, you can find me on Insta or at LinkedIn at Lindsay Dowd, H4H. Or you can reach me at my website, heartbeatforhire.com. Thanks so much. Have a great day.